Okay, so the huge drop happened this week, going into the weekend. I'm going to make my piece on it now, and then I need to get ready to set up my arrangements way in advance. Originally, I did have a mini rant or something I had wanted to say regarding the leak of possible D2 trials of Osiris without any actual or ocular truth to it, which is what hearsay to get fuckers to keep their tinfoil hats on bullshitting in the shadows waiting for the day that trials might return. Alright, so I sought to create this after the balance patch notes coming out that are affecting my adventures directly in some way, and the possibility of trials returning to the platform from an apparent data mine leak revealed by Aztec Gaming. I went on ahead and made my contribution and post <clears throat> opinion rather, and so I'm also going to go ahead and talk about it more in-depthly here now. I want to talk about this and my opinion on this because it's a crucial part as to why I've stayed in the know of mainly any PvP knowings to the video game or why I stay labbing private crucible matches in my free time when no one knows I'm around in order to make PvP builds for the bigger pursuits of the video game that I have yet to embrace or actually see just what they are. I need to be honest with myself here so I can have clarity and some mental peace with whatever does happen next in the PvP sandbox. I feel like I have on, I don't know, I feel like I almost have on one of those tinfoil hats just watching, waiting, playing and debating PvP, waiting for some dumb shit to happen that I can try to take advantage of or some shit. Playing more of Destiny has turned me into more of an animal than man for some reason, mentally, not physically, mentally. That was then. Now it's actually happened, like bluntly, openly happened. All the Empyrean Foundation's donations towards the rebuilding of this obelisk that Osiris keeps sending us on some huge loophole of a man mission has created the next direction for the community in the game's next season, the season of the unworthy, this being Trials of Osiris. So I want to try and make this direct and leave it here. Alright, this is the pinnacle apex activity of Destiny gaming competition that's going to be returning on the land after a long hiatus from another generation of Destiny gaming. My mind can't even fathom the amount of... It can't even fathom the amount of opportunity and prospect that is awaiting that horizon, knowing how difficult as shit that's going to be to try to meet. Trials of the Nine was an awesome experience that I had together on PS4 with Tact at that time. That was back with Killer and Flint when it was available each weekend it was here. That was Trials of the Nine rather, not Trials of Osiris. I feel that it made the effort to replace Trials of the Osiris too hard rather than being its own thing. And the battle system about that game was about as agreeable as it could be at the time, juggling PvE relevant notes over PvP. Everything about what I liked about the Nine was okay, I know it was in the shadow of Osiris. In terms of general relations, I know I loved Trials of the Nine over Trials of Osiris, but I did appreciate Trials of Osiris more over Trials of the Nine because of relevance and originality. Me personally, I'll explain. Back on Destiny 1's Trials of Osiris years ago, it was honestly a living hell a lot of the time in the early attempts. I remember towards making progress in my stages and trying to be good. I played with many, too many, assholes and hypocrites that spent more time making me feel like shit because I was trash at the game in the early stages of Destiny 1. And it continued in a cycle between KPM or Tiggle the Stunner or Online User or Merc. I hated all those dipshits. Not that they weren't already condescending in some casual conversation, just trying to interact with them and they always keep trying to make themselves sound like some stupid big shot. I know I wasn't any good at Destiny in those years, and that's the point as to why I wanted to play. But I didn't need to be reminded about how trash I was all the time. And I didn't appreciate all my input being shot down from condescension. Thus, Destiny Trials, Trials of Osiris, as wonderful as it was in some sense, it was shit to me. I was treated like shit in those trial teams I was in for the longest time. And I hold that all the time because I can't forget Trials of Osiris without remembering all of that ignorant dumb shit that I can be done with. I would be so happy if I could be done with all of it. But all of those cancerous memories are tied to Trials of Osiris. I didn't appreciate any of that. Teammates were more selfish, greedy, and ignorant than selfless or cooperative. 
And that changed over time, yes, but the damage was already done. <sighs> that was back in those days of 2016 or so. That was many years ago in another era of destiny altogether. What I have now in 2020, this is a whole other era of Destiny's generation. This is finally a chance for me to attain happiness on the biggest competitive platform of all time relevant to Destiny Media. <sighs> like, a fire is lit in me unlike any I've ever seen before. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared at the same time, knowing that there is a very strong chance I can fail if I'm not ready for this. The announcement itself hit mentally like a truck. I didn't think it was going to be showcased like this. Because it's a huge thing looming on the horizon and just the magnitude of those past thoughts, it all comes flooding back. This is a huge opportunity to attempt to achieve greatness with a new team. But this has to be thought out in advance based on what information has been provided thus far. Light level it might be a thing. Similar to Iron Banner, this is a thing for this activity, so a player needs to have their general light level around a set capping point in order to endure the comparable and compatible competition looming as the rounds escalate. The better you do, the more likely you are to encounter higher level players with a more cancerous build set up than the last, and it'll keep stacking. New maps will be added. And for my own benefit, a greater sense of organization needs to be done. A mini list of arrangements are needed and are currently being written at this time for me that I'm writing for myself, that I'm creating to a way in advance to allot proper focuses in all the correct areas for myself before going into anything here in this area for Destiny any point further beyond March. After the new season starts, I'll need to create a few backup plans as well as a backup plan for backup plans should a failing point incur or a failing point unfortunately may happen on this game. Luck always favors the prepared. Next, learning the maps and the meta before and after. This is a trial and error as practice makes perfect to assess each map or however the map of choice may be. I don't know if this may be a weekly cycle or however it is that it will update or if there's a set map that goes into this like how Trials of the Nine had it. I do not know. In addition, as high trafficking of competition will insist Staying on top of your best gear, exotics, updating all of these, and your builds are essential for keeping pressure and what stacks to that is applying the right pinnacle gun or pinnacle build outline to said map. Be aware of the maps at pros and cons. That is your advantage to defeating your enemy and staying one step ahead, not one step behind. The rules of the competitive playlist that is here on Destiny 2 apply here fully in the same sense. The difference being that you have to be tactful and more careful in each decision that you make in advance when you go to either advance forward or when you go to step back. Every decision has a consequence. And lastly, I'm issuing my thanks to Bungie designers and wanting to put this back in the game after so long if they feel the game's present state can sustain it in the way it's presented. I said a long time ago when it was removed indefinitely at that time that the opportunity had it come back on the table. I want to seize this fully and take my chance to finally be on the front lines to earn a hard sought prize that many people seek to make a name for and to make a name for themselves here in the community i want to be out there with the rest of them so i can face and go head to head against all of the trial greats of the past and the future to test myself and push myself to the limits to know exactly how strong Rodimus Prime is. So players on this community and on this competitive platform know who Rodimus Prime is when all of this is in the dust. And not just some, who are you again? Passing through, when you know exactly who the hell I am. No longer do I stand in the shadows of past fools. Now I can create better, more inviting, and more cherishable memories using all of the past misdeeds that were done to me and to my friends through this whole Trials of Osiris experience once upon a time as a proper stepping stone for the correct synergy and placement of moral value in teamwork as a whole. This is a massive opportunity that shapes futures and can potentially be the start of or end of an enjoyable or horrible PvP experience as both a content creator, competitor, as well as a fellow guardian of the Crucible. I take this opportunity to heart with much love, grace, direction, and determination to see my task and my team through to the promised lands as best as I am able to mentally and physically. 
that unknown promised lands being the lighthouse of Osiris. I know this is a lot to attempt to endure at my present state of mind, but there are times where you simply cannot be mentally prepared for the unknown. You can only meet it justly and with honor, and to fight your very best and most of all, have fun. I will do my best. I will not waste this chance as failure is no option. I aim to arrive at, or my name is not Rodimus Prime. I have spoken. Come season of the worthy, we all will find out if we can accomplish this goal together. I hope that we can.